First and foremost, when we send out our proposals to the review committee, what they're looking for is a really well-articulated research question. And if you do that right up front, it becomes, you, you can grab their attention. First, you have to come up with a question that you find interesting and others find interesting. It's really important that you find that to be an interesting question because the research process is an arduous one and you have to be able to keep up your energy level and your own interest level. But secondly, it should be interesting to others. A research project that nobody ever reads is not a particularly useful research project. To write a good proposal, I start by trying to identify a really interesting and important question. And usually that means what I've started with is too big to actually be a manageable research project. So then I have to narrow that down to something that is manageable and researchable. You need to narrow from that general research question that motivated your interest to precisely what your main contribution is going to be. And you don't want to be drawn off into sort of many different subtopics. It's important to focus. In terms of archival research, we're also interested in question-driven research rather than data-driven research. So we've talked about uh, having a good research question it comes from the question itself, it doesn't come from the data. You ask what's the question and then you try to figure out what data you need to answer that question. I think you need to start in the literature to know very clearly what's been done and what's not been done. But then you also have to ground your questions in an important question um, related to the profession. And you can generate those ideas by looking at new standards that are being set. You can look at inspection report data or reports that the PCAOB are putting out about problems that they see with audits. It doesn't have to be a, a new real world problem. It needs, it can be a new aspect of a real world problem. Uh, that other people haven't identified before and analyzed, or you could be applying new theory, uh, new research methods, or new data to an existing piece of a research problem that others have identified before. One of the traditional ways that we think about getting research ideas, people have said, is reading the Wall Street Journal. I would just say elevate that and move it into the auditing setting and become aware of, informed by, the uh, activities of the PCAOB, including the issues that they've selected to discuss and discuss through their standard setting advisory group and their investor advisory group that are open meetings, webcast, and um, you can find discussion of all stakeholders in the process uh, as, as part of that. And it's a way to identify research questions uh, on topics that are important um, for everybody. Uh, and those are ones that are going to have a high probability of being of interest um, uh, in terms of uh, uh, the wider audience. Once you've developed that idea and that research question, um, most people need tools to uh, help them think about and communicate what they're doing. And I always recommend to people, and I use in my own research still to this day, um, is writing what are called the Kinney Three Paragraphs, and then ensuring the validity of your design early on using the boxes. Bill Kinney has um, um, helped uh, evangelize what we call the Kinney Three Paragraphs, and this is What's the research question? Why is it important? And how are you going to address it? If you can get that down into one page with clarity, you're well on your way to having um, identified, not just identified a good question, but also starting to craft a proposal around that. And then we also have what are called the boxes. The boxes help you identify the conceptual relationships you're looking at, how you're going to operationalize them, and then how you're going to control for other confounding effects. When you think about what a research question is, at its, at its uh, most basic, it's specifying the relationship between at least two concepts. Normally, concept A affects concept B. 
I think using the boxes is a particularly useful exercise because it will point out potential internal validity flaws in your design. And it requires you to think at a conceptual level, which again requires that you think about your research question in a very precise way. It provides you a basis for applying your theory. And then any of the operational problems that you might have, where you may have improperly operationalized the variables or not controlled for other variables. These are tools I use all the time. These are tools you use regardless of what type of research you're doing or um, what, what type of question you're asking. For these proposals, the audience is a little different than for a typical academic audience because you have academics who are going to review the proposal and you have senior audit professionals who are going to review the proposals and both of those groups have to think that your proposal is interesting and important. It helps to connect the dots to say, here's my research question here's my theory, here's the hypotheses, and here's how I'm going to address it. Don't make them separate parts of the proposal and keep the theme going and make it clear what it is you're trying to do. Well-crafted proposals are based on a good theory that gives you some um, predictions of what you expect um, in the way of, of a relationship. So, it, 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 Rather than have a proposal that says, I think this, it would be good if you have a proposal that says, no, theory predicts this, and here's what the theory says. One of the things that I find is that if I'm not writing clearly, I'm probably not thinking clearly. So good thinking, good writing uh, go hand in hand. To me, the benefit of, of doing a CAQ proposal is first that we get ready access and maybe easier access to participants than we would if I went through my normal channels. So the CAQ will make sure that my study population gets filled out um, and I don't have to be the one making the harassing phone calls. Um, so that's a big plus for me. And, and the writing of the proposal and all of the thinking that I've described has to be done anyway. So there's really no incremental cost there, except maybe the targeting that needs to be done for your specific audience. One other benefit from working with the CAQ is that the proposals and then the instruments get reviewed carefully by the participating firms and they will often have a perspective on part of the instrument where they say well that's not feasible that, it, that we would have that information at this stage that you're describing or this isn't realistic and they can really help make sure that the participants are going to really understand the instrument in the way you intended. Um, and so I, I found that to be really beneficial. The CAQ provides direct support, financial support. It provides access to data. This is all very important. But one of the things that is probably less obvious is that it provides you with a way of actually getting feedback about your research idea from the best minds in the practice side of the profession. And this is just worth an amazing amount. I've worked with the members of the CAQ from practice on my own research, and the aid in the development of the idea to make sure that my idea matches key issues in practice is invaluable.